digital age we're now in, the, the cyberspace age that we're in allows us to do these kinds of things. And uh, hopefully uh, what is at least theoretically possible in, in terms of, uh, of uh, electronic polling uh, can actually be worked out. And this gives us a, a time to do that. In other words, it's one thing to, to uh, theorize that it could be done. It's another thing to get the actual programming in and make it work. Uh, so that there's there's no flaws in it, um, because every vote obviously is precious, and everybody considers everybody who votes consider their their vote singularly precious to them. So we want to uh, maximize the opportunity to complete that successfully. Hopefully, this will improve uh, voter turnout, uh, and uh, as I say, the de delayed implementation gives the county clerks and the office of elections. Times to make time to make sure it's implemented accurately. Um, this uh, presumes um, the uh, goodwill of everybody involved, but uh, I suppose there may be some, for reasons that are difficult to fathom here in Hawaii, but uh, may have some uh, validity elsewhere. Uh, that is to say, people providing false information or, or acting in a manner that uh, falsely represents uh, who they are uh, or some part of their backgrounds that, uh, that might not be uh, fully uh, in line with, with reality and the truth. So uh, a couple of days ago, I signed a, a bill into law, Act 128, that provides for anyone who gives false information with regard to voting to be deemed guilty of election fraud. And I think that that should uh, alleviate any qualms that anyone might have that uh, uh, enabling people to register and vote right up to and into election day might have some challenges associated with it. So I'm pleased to be able to, uh, to sign it and uh, pleased that we have two legislators here uh, who can represent the, the, uh, reasoning and the rationale behind it. Perhaps you might have come up and perhaps you'd like to say a few words in response to this. Uh, Representative Ng, you're welcome to. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, sure. I'll let Connie Ellen go first though. Okay. okay, sure. You're welcome to come up too. I mean, I want you both here when we sign oh, it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but Connie Ellen, cool. congratulations. Good for oh, you. First off, thanks governor for recognizing the need. Um, 50 years ago, Hawaii was first in the nation for voter turnout. Uh, 50 years later, we're dead last. And, you know, there's lots of reasons why people don't vote. We're super transient as a community. Some people live in two places. Um, my friends, I ask them why they don't vote. They tell me they're happy. Like, you know, that's atypical, but that's one well, reason. Well, I, I hope that carries over to August and November. But. <laughs> so that, exactly. So that's one reason. But, um, you know, no matter what the reason is, people aren't coming to the polls. Government should make it as easy as possible for new voters to be able to do so. Um, what spurred me to write and introduce this bill was early on when I was first running for office, I was 22 years old. I was knocking on doors and some guy, some Hawaiian guy with a bike rode up to me. This guy had like a shaved head and tattoos literally on his scalp. And um, he gets up and he says, you know, I never voted before, bro, but because of you, Connie, I, I like to participate this year. And I did tell him, like, I'm sorry, but you can't. The registration deadline is passed and you know lots of people want to look at this bill and say why are we making it easier for lazy voters who aren't 
um, who don't take the time to register beforehand. I try to ask the question of why are we purposely um, allowing these new voters to be disenfranchised? And when I asked that question, the answer I got was it's based on these registration deadlines are based on technological limitations that no longer exist. So why are they still there? So under this bill, if a new voter watches these presidential elections, which are after the deadline, or presidential debates, and they fully feel that they're engaged enough to vote, they can just go ahead and do so. So, um, you know, with that being said, I want to thank uh, some of the hardcore stalwart advocates. Janet Mason from The League has been working uh, super hard, the same as uh, Carmel Lim for two, ye two years now, um, at least since I've been here. They're probably doing this for a lot longer. And, of course, um, the Judiciary Chair, Carl, who probably has some words to say. Thank you, Hanil. Thanks. I would just reemphasize what Governor said about the on the uh, the fraud side of things. You know, there that was the that was the only uh, objection raised to the bill that I thought had any validity whatsoever. That it was anything to be concerned about. But my feeling is that if somebody is willing to risk going to jail for five years <laughs> to throw one vote, they probably will have no. They probably will not turn the election one way or the other. Um, you know, that's a pretty big gamble for. It's a, it's a severe penalty for not very much gain, and I just uh, I think when it comes right down to it, uh, we're not going to we're not going to be dealing with that situation. The people aren't going to do it. So I'm very pleased to have been involved in passing it, and uh, congratulations to you, Camille, for getting it done. Thank you. Very good. So I'm going to ask uh, both of our able legislators to uh, accompany me while I sign it, and then we'll take holy pictures with everybody who'd like to be associated with this today. Done. 